Hi, my super sweet crafty friends. Welcome to my channel, Carolina's Creations Handmade. If you're new, please subscribe and click the bell button down below so you don't miss any of my videos. And today I want to share with you how to make my mini album junk journal. Uh, today we're going to learn how to make deck over. And uh, as you see here, it's a little chunky mini album. And I made it so it had plenty of pages for pictures and also space for a junk journal. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm going to share with you how it looks inside with the pages and then we'll start making the cover. So it has a pocket on the uh, cover page there, then you have another pocket page here that has a big pocket at the top and another pocket on the back. This side is um, a smaller page and it holds uh, two tags here at the front. You can see there the little spacing for tags and then you can place a picture or a bigger mat or something here we'll decorate that later on and then when you turn it then you have another uh, bucket here for another tag you open the little page in there and you can place a journaling tag in there and then you have another um, bucket for a tag and in here you have a bigger area that you can place a bigger mat for pictures on this side is a blank page that you can use to place uh, bigger pictures. And then on this side, you can see that this page has two flaps. It's not the way it's going to end up looking like. I'll share with you later on when we finish building the uh, mini how it's going to look. You have another pocket here, a top pocket on the page, which is a large pocket. And then you turn the page. Over here you have a big area for large pictures and then you have this flap that you can use for either pictures or journaling cards or you can use them for both. You have a top pocket in there and that smaller page and then on the side there's another pocket that is a bottom one and then on this side you have uh, this page with two flaps that actually um, are going to make sort of like a, a top closing pocket. As you see in there, there's a bigger pocket at the top. And then on this side, it's just a blank page that you can use for big pictures. Here's another pocket, another pocket at the top, as you can see there. And then on the side, there's another pocket in there and then an area for pictures. You can have a blank page there for a big mud. And then over here, you open the page. So you have a folding page in there and then a folding flap in there that you can use to place pictures or to place journaling cards. So you turn the page and over here you have another uh, flap that you can add journaling cards or pictures, a bigger uh, page for pictures. Here is a pocket and then a top loading pocket for a big, big mat you can place in there. Over here is like an opening that you have on those file folders and then you can place things at the back. Here is a big page that you can use for uh, larger pictures. Over here is another one of those openings like the... Uh, uh, envelope flaps, I mean the folder flaps. And then you actually open this page in here, which is a fold out, and you have more areas for pictures. Here you have a little page that has a pocket at the top and the, bo the bottom, and I'll show you later what I plan to do with this. It's a mirror on the other side, and then at the top you have a pocket in there. So the next page, you have the top pocket, and that top pocket has a little flap pocket in there that you can use to place tags etc. So you can turn the page and here is a big uh, area for pictures also on the next side and then you have in here the bottom um, pocket in there with the little flap also and the top loading pocket where you can place a big mat for pictures. Over here is the same you have a little flap in there and a um, bottom pocket. On this page you have another flap I love to use this like for journaling and then you can place a bigger picture on the back. You have another page here for big pictures, another flap, this one is a top uh, flap and you can use it to actually, I'm going to <laughs> show you later on what we can do with that. And then the final page is also a mirror of, of the other one and here you can see the three holes that I am using because I want to uh, insert, I'm going to have three inserts for my junk journal. So this area will be for a junk journal. And then over here on the other cover, you have another pocket. And this is the end of our mini. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you how to make the cover. So here's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to use chipboard. And I'm going to be using also this cutter. 
This is a Fiskar cutter. I love this cutter. It cuts uh, heavy materials and then it's foldable. So it doesn't take as much space, even though it's bulky, but um, you can fold it and uh, store it easier. I'm going to be using 12 by 12 medium chipboard here. And uh, you can see this cutter actually cuts medium chipboard. Uh, it, <laughs> it takes a little effort, so you're going to have to use a little bit of force, but I love that it cuts it, and this is such a sturdy machine, honestly. And I love that it has those metal bars there that are guides, so your cut is really straight. Um, we're going to cut uh, over there at three and a half inches, and then we're going to cut at six inches. So we're going to turn our piece as you saw there and we're going to cut at six in inches. That's going to give us two pieces for our cover. I'm playing here a little bit with my cardstock because I want to make sure that I am going to make an even cut. If you see those bars at the top of the quarter, it's great because it keeps the cutting uh, straight. So here I have my two pieces. Now I'm going to make my spine out of that leftover uh, three and a half by 12 inch piece. I'm going to cut it at eight and a half and that will give us our spine for our mini album. So you can see there I'm cutting at eight and a half. And again, I really love this cutter. It's a little trouble, I mean a little effort to cut, but it just, it, I love it. So we're gonna get two pieces of eight and a half by 12 for the covers and one piece of eight and a half by three and a half inches for the spine. I'm going to be using this Sunny Days a paper pad from Maggie Holmes. I really love some of the papers here and I think they're gonna be perfect for our mini. I like this one and I like those little dotted papers. They're beautiful. The flower ones, some of my favorites. And then these are so interesting. And this one I adore. I'm gonna use this for my cover and I'm gonna share with you later how I use it. I like this one and the flower ones are perfect. So here you have this. If we cut it the size of the paper the way it is, it's going to give us uneven um, pieces on, on our image. So I'm going to share with you what I do so I can get even uh, placements and we'll get a clear image that way. We're going to make two pieces of the quarter cover that are eight and a quarter by five and three quarter inches and a piece for the spine that is eight and a quarter by three and a half inches. So that would be the size you cut your spine if you're using just a regular image that you don't want to piece together like I'm doing here. But I'm going to share with you, I'm going to cut my uh, top and bottom part of the uh, paper piece as you saw there. And then I'm going to cut the center piece that's left for my two covers. And then I'm going to piece together the other parts. I'm using this cardstock. I bought this at Tuesday morning a while ago. So I'm going to use these two 12 by 12 pieces and I'm going to glue them together at a half inch overlap, as you see there. So I'm going to place one of the pages on top of the other, um, leaving a one inch, inch overlap. So I'm going to glue my piece together. And I wanted to thank you guys for um, sending me some more of your stories, sharing them with me. Today I'm going to share a little bit more of a story of one of my friends here, Heather. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with me. And thank you so much for sharing, even though this is something that is very difficult for you. And uh, you have such a great heart that you shared it, um, even though you're risking getting some... Um, nasty comments or something that's <laughs> never fail, but you did it because you wanted to help other people. Thank you so, so much for doing that. I appreciate it. And I'm going to share more of your story in a minute. So here you can see how it looks after I glue it. And now we're going to glue together our uh, chipboard pieces so we can create our cover. So I'm going to place the uh, cover and the spine here. I'm going to leave a one eight eight inch in between the covers and the spine. I'm going to start gluing and you can see that it's been a while since I make a mini album. It's a lot easier if you glue your spine first, that way you have a guide for the covers. So don't do as I did here, glue your spine first and then you'll have an easier time placing the covers so they're all um, even and aligned. So while I glue here, um, I wanted to share with you more of my friend's story. She actually has battled with depression since she was a little kid. She had to take medication for it and it's been really, really difficult for her. On top of that, she actually was a victim of um, 
sexual abuse. And uh, she's had a very hard time with it. She has to battle with the depression. And on top of that, she's had the misfortune of having some people who are actually judgmental, who have made her feel like she should be ashamed of herself for being a victim. Please, 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 if any of you have been a victim of any type of abuse, please know you are not to blame and you should not feel ashamed at all. You were a victim. Someone did that to you. So you should not be responsible for it. Don't ever let anyone make you feel ashamed for that. You have nothing to be ashamed of. And unfortunately, sometimes we find people like that. And it's even more difficult when it's people that are part of our community, like our family, friends, dear loved ones. Sometimes we have to make the choice to let those people go because we have to make sure that we prioritize our health first. Unfortunately, there are people that are not meant to be there for us. And sometimes, even though it's very hard, we have to learn that it's better to learn uh, when to let people go so we can preserve our health. Also, please know, if you are um, suffering from any kind of mental health, you should not be ashamed of it. And let me tell you, I can tell you from experience, I've been ashamed of it for a while. Um, I've always even denied it to myself that I suffer from mental health. Sometimes I was suspicious of the fact that I may have been suffering from depression. But um, I denied it to myself. And I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm going to let you know when you cut your corners in here, make sure that you don't cut the corners too close to the tip of, the, of your covers. I'm going to close them, leaving a bigger gap than necessary here just to have uh, an idea when I fold it so I can, gaze, um, I, I can gauge a little bit where to cut. Uh, you'll see here also that I cut too close to it and then I had to do a little fixing in there. So what I do is I cut an estimate. Um, I know it's going to be longer, but then I fold my pages and then I have a better idea of where I want to cut. So my corners are um, even and I don't leave anything <laughs> open. Um, it doesn't always go to plan. <laughs> if you will see in here, one of my corners, I cut to uh, the cor the cut that I made was sort of like too sharp and uh, I didn't leave enough card stock to cover it but I'll share with you how I fix it it's really easy and I'm only going to share here how I fix it because um, I want you to know how to do it in case you're not using uh, anything to decorate your corners I'm going to be using metal corners for this so I really didn't have to do anything to cover it but I wanted to make sure that you see what I did the fix so if it happens to you then you know how to fix it also make sure that you use glue that is forgiven the glue that I'm using to uh, glue the chipboard pieces to my cardstock is very forgiven meaning that it doesn't really um, dry very quickly so I have enough time to work with it and then I can burnish it and I won't get um, any lumps um, like I would get if the glue would dry a lot faster because you will have the lumps if you don't burnish it right away so make sure the glue you're using is like that if you're using glue I usually make my mini albums using um, double-sided tape but I wanted to try something different with this one. So it's my first time using glue. <laughs> I'm sharing with you the tips I learned. So make sure that you use glue that is forgiven if you're not going to burnish right away. So for the bottom pieces, for my chipboard pieces, I'm using a glue that is sort of like a gel glue. It takes some time to dry, so it gives me time to work. And you can see here, it's the little piece, a little nick in there that I talked to you about. So what I do is just add a little bit of adhesive glue in there and then cut a little tip, a little corner of a cardstock and then just place it in there like a little triangle, a small one that you can fit in there and then you can cover it and you won't see that mistake in there. So I'm going to burnish a little bit and as you saw I burnish also on the um, lines in there, the one eighth of an inch gap that I left and that makes it so that I can fold my piece easier and it would have a cleaner finish. 
So now I'm going to glue the flaps to my cardstock over here for this flaps. I'm actually using art glitter glue. This glue is fabulous. I love this glue so much, but it's not as forgiving. It dries a lot quicker. So you have to make um, sure that you work uh, as fast as you need to so you don't get uh, lumpy areas on your cardstock. This glue is really, really good glue, but you have to keep in mind it dries a lot quicker. So burnish all your areas to make sure that you remove any lumps from glue, that you even them out so you have a cleaner finish. So going back to what I was talking to you about, guys, um, I know firsthand how difficult it is to admit that you suffer from any mental health issues. I suffer from depression and anxiety, and I never really even admitted to myself until a few months ago. And it's been really difficult for me to even admit it. And I know that there were some times in my life that I could probably have benefited from using some medication because sometimes um, I've had uh, very hard times in my life that had caused my depression to flare. And I think it would have been beneficial for me. I don't really like to rely on medications that much because I think sometimes they're overprescribed and there are other things that you can do to help yourself. But please don't listen to me. I'm not a, um, a professional. I'm not licensed. I, I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just letting you know that there's several things that you can um, do to help yourself. So go to a, a certified, a licensed professional who can help you, a medical professional if you need uh, treatment or medication. Please, please, please don't be embarrassed about it. It's funny because I was thinking about it. I heard somebody said this once, I don't remember who, but I think it's just so, so true. Uh, somebody said, nobody is ashamed of saying that they suffer from any uh, heart issues, for example. Why would you be ashamed of uh, acknowledging that you suffer from a mental illness? It's the same thing. It's not something that you cause. It's something that you're born with. And there's a lot of things that you can do to treat it. It's not something that you should be ashamed of. And it took me a while to learn this, believe me. But it makes your life a lot easier once you let go of the need to be perfect. Unfortunately, due to the way I was raised, I've always had <laughs> the need to be perfect and for me suffering for any illness like that is a sign of imperfection or was a sign of imperfection. Um, I've learned um, this past few months to actually embrace my imperfections and love my uniqueness and you should do the same. You're special in your own way. You go to your, through your own trials, tribulations and they make you the person you are. So just um, don't let anything like that hold you back don't be ashamed of it it's like any other illness and um, you shouldn't be embarrassed about it and please don't let um, shame hold you from seeking treatment if you need it your life would benefit so much more from it so i hope this is helpful for you and heather thank you so so much for sharing your story i think you're so courageous you're so beautiful and um i thank you so much for caring about others um, enough to share your story, even though you um, actually put yourself at, at uh, risk of having someone not being so nice to you. I don't think that should happen, but unfortunately, it's something that happens. Just you know that you are a beautiful human being, that you are caring, you're loving, and that is something that nobody can take from you. You are such a special person, and I appreciate you sharing your story with me. I'm proud of you, Heather, and I hope that you keep going, and don't let shame ever hold you from being you. Guys, thank you so much for sharing your stories. You can see here what I do to piece together my pieces uh, from a big piece of decorative paper. So you can use it and you can make a cohesive image so you can use in your project. Over here, I'm going to glue the last parts of my cover. and. Uh, if you use glue, another tip I'm going to give you, you need to have either a um, burnishing tool or maybe a butter knife if you don't have that. that. And also make sure you have handy uh, a little uh, cloth or something that you can use to clean up the mess of the glue because the glue is going to seep out and you really need to clean it off if you want to have a better finished project. So here's my cover. I hope you like my tutorial. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, 
uh, and click the like button. And I hope to see you back here soon for my next video. Bye bye. Love you guys. Mwah.